Postdocs are, I, I feel like with every stage of an educational kind of career, it becomes sort of more optional. Grade school is not optional. High school is relatively not optional. College in 2023 is almost not optional. But as you start moving up, grad school, the postdoc is kind of this very optional thing you do. So I do think it really does require for you to think, why am I doing this? I think a bad reason to do it is I don't want to deal with like the world. Like I don't think you say, I'm not ready for the world, I'll do a postdoc. I think people do that. But I think the folks who are successful are saying, I am here to make the following connections. So I now have, I went from having X letters of recommendation to now X plus whatever. Now I have people who can speak to my scholarly abilities. So you've grown some network, I think would be a success metric. The other one is you have produced some scholarly works or at least have enough material to wrap them up at your next position. So if you're going into a faculty job, maybe they're not done, but I'll be able to publish them within the first year, first whatever, during that pre-tenure process. So some amount of scholarly works, some amount of metrics, uh, I mean, uh, connections related to um, your, your network. I think the other thing about a postdoc is, did you get the ability for many things that, to be a manager on some level? I think if you went and did a postdoc and never had to have someone that was working, quote unquote, under you or someone that needed to discuss goals with you and then you gave them tasks and they came back, I think that's an important piece. There may be some teaching, but I think whatever categories, I think that'd be the general category, scholarly research, um, networking, mentoring, and teaching. You would put different percentages in those bins for what your goals are. And then I would step back and say, did I get those things accomplished? I think there's this other thing that um, is important is that you can do a postdoc for quite a while. The other thing I think is um, to figure out um, that hard decision of when it might be time to move on. It might be very comfortable to be, well, one more year, one more year. But I think part of the other challenge is being able to have a way to have a clean story. I've done this, I, gave, I gathered and gained those experience I just measured, mentioned, and then I move on to the next position. My feeling of a successful postdoc experience is absolutely dependent on what the person wants to be after the postdoc. So to me, all these training periods of time are purely they're a, a pathway to becoming something. So to me, that's what you always start out with. Okay, what is it you want to be doing after the postdoc? And how do we design it such that it can be, help you get to where you want to be? You know, again, many times it has to be buffered by what the funding is and what have you. But like, for example, the degree of independence this person wants to be able to achieve will be different for someone who wants to become a PI after the postdoc versus someone who wants to be something else. So success is basically dependent completely on what the person wants to be after the postdoc. In our case, so in addition to actually mentoring postdocs, my own research program is actually studying how scientists become scientists with large-scale longitudinal qualitative research. And what we find through that is what someone wants to differentiate into after their training is highly variable and highly time-dependent. So it's really beginning from the standpoint when someone comes in, begins, okay, what is it you think you want to be after the postdoc? Or are you trying to figure that out? So some people will come into it knowing exactly what they want to be. Other people will come into a postdoc not quite sure because they're still differentiating. And so again, that's the starting conversation and then ongoing conversations because that very well may change over time what they think they want to be or how it wants to be designed. And my feeling is you just expect change. You're not surprised by it. So you're all set up for how things will change and evolve as people go through a postdoc experience. So what I expect is someone who is prepared to first um, have a honest conversation about the experience that they're looking for. That's the first thing. Um, and have the confidence to have that, that chat. And then after that, um, someone who can make adjustments on those goals based on the needs that I have as a mentor. And then sort of have this give and take. And then so then mutual goals are and established and then you know that's um, to me that that's what I'm looking for somebody who is willing to give and, and to take um, not who they are but um, to grow in in the role as a postdoc so that's that's what it is to me I think one of the things with a postdoc mentor that's important is to meet frequently um, I think sometimes we get so engaged in the work 
that it's like, let's just get the work done, let's get the research, let's get the writing done. But I think we miss opportunities to meet um, frequently so we can constantly discuss those, the work, but also the professional development for the postdoc. So as we have these, as we set times to meet, to me that's the best way to sort of approach their development and the needs of the institution. The beginning of that conversation really sets the tone for what we're going to do at that point from converting those um, objectives into a plan. And so we communicate that verbally early on. And I think a key element of getting to the same page is recognizing that verbal uh, communication is usually inadequate for making sure that you really have the same understanding about something. So I usually try to bake into, uh, or usually try to bake into that conversation, some aspect of a written plan early on. It could be to the goal of applying for an individual postdoctoral fellowship. It could be towards the goal of just making sure we're on the same page about what those first things are going to be. And I think part of the merit of doing it that way is that the exercise of trying to write down even a high level, crude, unpolished series of goals is that it prompts everyone to think about something they wouldn't have thought of if they just talked about it from the first point. So I use this for graduate students as well as for postdoctoral fellows, and I think I've just found it to be invaluable. In fact, we'll probably talk some more about this, but I think regular written communication and feedback about the um, goals and expectations is just an essential part of the process to make sure that even well-intentioned people don't let things slip through the cracks by virtue of being busy and working on other things. One of the most useful strategies I found for onboarding new researchers of any stage, postdoctoral fellows and graduate students alike, is to start with a project that involves a team. Um, there may be an individual, and there is, there is an individual component to that, but by having those contributions be part of a team structure, and preferably for a project that is underway, you have an automatic support network, and it creates an automatic way that you know who you can ask if you, you know, would like to know where that supply is, and you don't have to feel like you're imposing on someone because you're naturally part of that team, and it creates just this kind of very natural structure that makes it easier to ask for help faster and also makes it easier for uh, everyone else who's, who's helping to mentor or collaborate to sort of know who's responsible for checking in and making sure things work. I think the other benefit of onboarding as part of an ongoing project is it helps to um, walk through the process of how we do things within my group, which is different than how those same things are done in other groups, and we fully recognize that those are not the best ways of doing it in either one of those camps, but it is useful to start thinking about, you know, as soon as possible, how do we do it? How do other folks do it? Are there ways that um, we can help you adopt some of what we consider best practices? Are there ways that what you know could improve our best practices? And so the design of putting someone on that project early on is to really climb all those learning curves as quickly as possible in a way that doesn't have to wait for the slow parts, which is the big experiments or the new stuff that we're gonna spend the majority of your time as a fellow on. But once you've got that kind of simple cycle underway, it just makes it so you can focus on all the things you really care about with this kind of um, low energy barrier entry into the overall uh, process there. And again, I, I, I'll, I'll emphasize this again, the social aspect of being part of a team is a huge benefit of being on a project.